This video is brought to you by Wix. Head on over to wix.com slash go slash polyphonic to check it out today. Somewhere in the black of space, deep in the hull of a hulking ship, a slave uprising begins. Thus starts Splendor and Misery, clipping second studio album. Splendor and Misery is a high-concept hip-hopper telling the story of a slave aboard a ship adrift in space. Not only is it one of the most compelling albums in recent memory, it's also a wholly unique presentation of a sci-fi story. The album was even nominated for a Hugo Award for Best Dramatic Presentation Short Form. And I think the strength in Splendor and Misery is neither in the story nor the music alone, but in how they both play into each other to create a new kind of narrative experience. Let's take a closer look. Splendor and Misery opens with Long Way Away, a haunting song that orients us adrift in space. It lays out the story themes that Clipping will explore throughout the album, and also introduces a musical theme, traditional gospel and blues chants. These chants are reminiscent of field chants, once sung by African slaves, linking the history of slavery to its future in this far-off world. The chants are mixed with deep mechanical sounds and open reverb. Auditorily, this places us deep in the cold hull of a spaceship, surrounded by metal and machinery. With the setting in place, the story starts in The Breach, where David Diggs raps as the ship's onboard computer. Generally operating normally, a small anomaly has become evident and probably should be noted. There is spiking in the pulse of a member of the cargo and the crew and other passengers have not begun to notice the facility you search. His rapping is fast and mechanical, belying the inhuman nature of the computer. In this scene, slaves that were being brought as cargo on the ship are revolting. The end of the scene is cut short by alarms, gunfire, and then static. This is followed up by All Black. All Black everything. In this song, we learn that the revolt was a success, but only one slave remains. Cargo number 2331 is commandeer the vessel. Warning. In the song, the mothership's AI watches Cargo 2331's first days at the helm of the vessel. Not turning all keys, he puts the ship through paces and paces the halls. Pacing is madness, patient is virtuous, patient of these observations. Alone, he passes his time polishing weapons and rapping to keep his sanity. And always keeps the weapons magazines clean. Despite the sci-fi nature of the story, this song is full of references to contemporary hip-hop. Dropping lines that call back to Biggie's Juicy and name dropping Kendrick's control verse. He quotes Kendrick's control verse and spews his vitriol into the echoes of the bowels of this floating metal hull. The reference that drives the song, though, is Lupe Fiasco's All Black Everything. Fiasco's song imagines what the world would look like if the transatlantic slave trade had never happened. Clipping's song is a muse on the inverse of this, a world where the slave trade is happening once more. Throughout All Black, the Mothership AI's opinions of 2331 change. In the beginning, they're spiteful of 2331, but in the end, they've sympathized with him, and they end up falling in love with the former slave and threatening his pursuers. Warning, Mothership reporting. If you continue to pursue, there will be no choice but to destroy you. Warning, Mothership reporting. This love will be defended at all costs. Do not fuck with it. Black then we get an interlude where we hear 2331 freestyle rapping to himself. This song shows off how the production of William Hudson and Jonathan Snipes are essential to the narrative. Using white noise, echoes, clicks, and beeps, the producers create a clear image of the vastness of space and the cold, empty metal of the ship. The production isn't just part of the music, it's an essential part of the storytelling in Splendor and Misery. It depicts the scenery and creates the atmosphere that make the narrative feel that much closer, that much stronger. It helps the listener sympathize with 2331's situation. It puts us alone and cold, moving through the void. Finally, having escaped his pursuers, 2331 realizes that he needs to go into a hypersleep if he wants to survive. We see these realizations through the eyes of the computer on Wake Up. 
the computer lays forth the grim reality. The chances that 2331 will ever reach another world are slim to none. The chance that he ever reaches any place suitable to support life in his lifetime is pretty low. Get low, pretty low, get low, pretty low, get low, pretty low, get low. And the chances of him ever seeing anybody that he knows or even lower is always making up his mind to just go. Let go, just go, let go, just go, let go, just go, let go. So Nevertheless, he puts himself under the watch of the computer as he sleeps and dreams of an idyllic life on Earth. As he travels, we get another slave song, singing of the long, lonesome journey. This is the journey through space, but it was also the journey through the Underground Railroad, hidden pathways in a dark night leading to an unknown destination. One of the key themes that Splendor and Misery shows in its music is the concept of inherited trauma, the idea that atrocities like slavery can have far-reaching impacts spanning generations. In this sense, the slave songs of centuries ago are echoing through the story of 2331. This experience is in his blood. At the end of the interlude, we get a scrambled radio signal sending a coded message, and then we hit the middle of the album in True Believer. This song could be the subject of a video all on its own. It tells the story of a sprawling and vast mythology, drawing on Central African lore and N.K. Jemisin's The Inheritance Trilogy. He vomited the sun which dried the water leaving land and soon after came moon and stars and animal and man of many hues. This seems to be the mythology of the slaves in the story, or a mythology that 2331 is creating in his sleep. And then it draws this mythology together with the history of this world. It tells of man's space exploration, colonization, and finally, of the new version of Vandals slavery. Raced to find this race of beings that can handle time inside other bodies so they can sell it. The one thing in the universe no one held yet. This new version speaks of slavery in terms of time, the duration of human lives being traded as a resource. This is a discussion that goes hand in hand with 2331, who is currently in a long cryosleep through hyperspace. The thread of slavery is musically woven through this song too. Its hook is an interpolation of the slave song, I Know When I'm Going Home. Just as clipping recontextualized slave songs into a sci-fi context, they also take a sci-fi spin on another kind of black resistance music, gangster rap. Aramout reads like a sci-fi interpretation of that genre, peppering the lyrics with references to sci-fi greats like Ursula Le Guin, Octavia Butler, and Samuel Delaney. Anybody bugging get it in the mandible. Shit, got a problem, better hit him on the answerable. Ain't nobody flying just because they fly here. You could trip sets, real players trip light years. Tight the first verse opens with the line, We who are about to, the title of a sci-fi novel by Joanna Russ. That novel takes the form of an audio diary kept by a woman abandoned on an alien planet. Russ's protagonist initially has other survivors with her, but she's forced to kill them when they try to rape her. The rest of the novel is the protagonist philosophizing on her life and trying to survive in the cold of space, a clear influence on the direction of splendor and misery. And just as Russ's protagonist reflects on her situation, so too does 2331 in the album's third interview. Everything was at the wrong time, line, the wrong space, and songs rhyme to beat about the distance back to the street with kings and queens and every hiccup in between was dreams and all the blood. Eventually, the desperation of our protagonist's situation starts to get to him. We hear this in the ominous Break the Glass. I'm so tired of being on, I'm so tired of being on, won't you help me, won't you help me. 2331 is in a state of emergency and losing his sanity. He's trying to call out to a computer that seems to have helped him, but only as a silent observer. As he loses grip on his sanity, he decides to start breaking the computer monitors to try to wake it up. In the penultimate song, Baby Don't Sleep, 2331 goes into a series of random jumps and sleeps, desperately searching the universe for life. Finally, the AI wakes up, telling 2331 that he needs to formulate a clear plan if he's gonna have any hope of surviving. But you gotta make a choice of where you're going because staying is surrendering since you might be the last that's not an option. Get your shit together, love a boy, stop looking at the clock. In the final song, A Better Place, 2331 executes the AI's plan, his last hope. He's gonna put himself into another cryosleep and tell the AI to jump through space until they find a civilization he can return to. 
The AI must stand witness to this, alone like 2331 was once. And 2331 must go into a sleep that he's not certain will ever come to an end. In the old shit, maybe it's this time bound conscience that keeps him out pushing through nothing with only the hope brought on by this belief that there must be a better place to be somebody, be somebody else. It's a tragic ending, but it still has a shred of hope for a better future. Splendor and Misery is a unique story, and it does what sci-fi does best. It pulls from the present and past to paint a picture of the future and to ask questions about what it means to be a human, what it means to exist in the world we live in now, and what it will mean to exist in the future world to come. If you ever find yourself alone on a spaceship with time to kill, a great way to kill that time is by building a website. Building a website can be a fun challenge, a creative outlet, or a way to help build your personal brand. And the best way to build a website is with Wix. Wix is a fully customizable web building tool that you can use to build that website you've always imagined. They've got a variety of tools for people of all skill levels. It doesn't matter if it's your first or your hundredth website. If you're looking to sell, they have e-commerce functionality that lets you sell worldwide. And if you're looking to express yourself, Wix gives true creative freedom. On Wix, your only design limitation will be your own imagination. My own website, watchpolyphonic.com, was built on Wix and I love it. Head on over to wix.com slash go slash polyphonic to check it out. Whether you want your website for music, bookings, a personal portfolio, or just a fun hobby, Wix will meet your needs. And be sure to use that link in the description to let Wix know that I sent you and to show your support for my channel.